During her lifetime, Vibia Sabina, wife of the early 2nd century AD Emperor Hadrian, was depicted in coins and statuary wearing several different hairstyles, but none so often as this deceptively simple coiffure. It is believed to be one of her earliest portrait types and is depicted in no fewer than 29 coin issues between the years 128 and 136 AD. The reverse of this coin honors Juno, thus associating Sabina with the queen of the Roman gods and, by extension, her husband Hadrian with Jupiter, king of the universe. Scholars call this style a platina type because of the diadem-like mound of hair over the forehead. Although both styles have a similar silhouette, Sabina's style differs greatly from Empress Plotina's in its technical details. Plotina's back hair is divided into many small braids and bound at the nape in a looped ponytail. Sabina's style is smooth and unbraided. Only the tips of the back hair are bound. Also, a knotted cord suddenly sprouts from Sabina's temples. Rather than imitating Plotina, this style has more in common with goddess imagery, such as this statue in the Houston Museum of Fine Arts, identified as Diana, goddess of the hunt. The back hair is the same, but Diana wears a pearled diadem. Pearl diadems are iconographic symbols reserved for the gods only. Sabina's diadem is created from the hair itself, likely meant to suggest, rather than openly claim, divinity. Sabina had skilled hairdressing slaves called ornatrices to dress her hair. Hairdressing during the Roman Imperial Age often relied on sewing to hold the hair in place, especially ponytails. In fact, rubber bands weren't invented until 1845. For period-appropriate recreation, you will need the following tools. Wooden or bone combs, four headless hair bodkins, blunt bone needles and wool thread, woolen cord about 30 inches long, and leather strip or narrow ribbon. You will also need small forfex shears. Let's begin. First, comb the hair out smooth. Divide the front hair from the back with an ear-to-ear -ear parting. Secure each side with a hair bodkin. Isolate a narrow strip of hair from the low crown to the nape. Keep the rest of the hair secured with hair bodkins. Weave a three-strand inside braid, also known as a French braid, from the top of this section to the nape, then continue three-strand braiding to the tips of the hair. This will serve as an anchor braid in later steps. Use needle and thread to secure the braid from unraveling.
Leave the needle and thread attached. Release the back hair and comb it smooth. With needle and thread, bind the tips of the hair together at the center back. Stitch through the anchor braid to prevent the binding from sliding off the silky ends of the hair. When finished, clip the thread. Now we're moving to the front. Have your woolen cord handy. Release the front hair. Comb all of it straight up over the top of the head as smoothly as possible. Have the empress hold on to the tips of the hair. Center the woolen cord and tie it once about five inches from the top scalp. Hold a hair bodkin horizontally in front of the tied hair level with the knot. Align the ends of the cord with the bodkin. Wrapping forward, wind the ponytail over the cord and the bodkin in a figure eight pattern all the way to the ends of the ponytail. The bodkin provides a rigid support while you figure eight around the cord. Now roll the wrapped hair toward the forehead until it stops. Carefully pull out the hair bodkin. Have the Empress hold the roll in place. Bring the cord ends to the back of the head and tie them snugly under the occipital. With a blunt needle and woolen thread, carefully stitch the knotted cord to the back of the head through the anchor braid. This will prevent the cord from slipping during wear. When it feels secure, clip the thread. Take about eight inches of leather or narrow ribbon and cover the ponytail stitching. Sabina and Hadrian's marriage was childless. When she died, she was deified, so she got to be a goddess after all.